In July 2020, a sealed graded copy of Super Mario Brothers on the original Nintendo Entertainment System sold at auction for $114,000. And that was a lot of money. But in April 2021, another graded copy sold at auction for $660,000. And that was crazy. But in August 2021, Super Mario Brothers sold at auction for $2 million. And that was just controversial. Reading headlines like these may leave you wondering if that old box of games in your attic is actually a gold mine. Like all things collectibles, the answer to that question is that it's complicated. The retro video game market is in a bit of a slump right now, especially with graded and sealed games. But today I'll be going through Skylar's NES collection. Will he have anything unexpectedly valuable that was just sitting in his storage unit? Let's take a look. Oh, where's my paper? Uh, Do you have a paper? Yeah. I, had, I had a sheet of paper somewhere. I know Skylar because he, he's in a band. What's your band called? High Voltage Arcade. I watched your video. I promoted it on the channel. It was great. The production on the video and the songwriting itself, really well done. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. that it was a lot of fun to put together. And also, before I forget, got to give you a little High Voltage Arcade hey, sticker. Hey, check that baby out. <laughs> oh, go. look how shiny that is. Yeah, they're nice and reflective. You should grade it. What's that? You have a lot of stuff here. And when I posted the video, you contacted me and said, hey, I would love to get this appraised and see what it's worth because you're kind of wondering what to do with it, yeah? You know? Yeah, yeah. A lot of this stuff I got from my dad. Like, he yeah. helped me collect this stuff when we were growing up. It's just sitting around and I finally started going through my storage unit and I was like, yeah, it's about time to figure out what I actually have. Yeah, and you sent me some <laughs> photos of this and I was like, oh, dude, you've got to come on and we've got to do this. <laughs> so yeah. I said, the only thing I ask is that you don't look up the values ahead of time. So you, you're you blind on all of this. I have from a value perspective. I have zero clue. I'm going to give you a few options. Should you decide to sell it, what are the ways to sell it? Because mm. a lot of people have this stuff and they think that it's gold and they overprice it and they don't, and it just sits and doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah. And then other people undersell it and basically give it away in a way that's to the detriment of your stuff. That's what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid just like, all right, uh, here's my box and NES stuff and then just put it on offer up and yeah. then just find out later, like, dude. Let's start with the first thing, which is this, the NES console. Now this is your childhood NES, I take it? Yes, that's okay. the one that I grew up with. So there's something really important in this, which is what counts as a complete complete console when someone mm. sells this and what's in a, what's a fair market value when people go back to the console there's a few things as a buyer that you should be aware of one is is it complete and complete in my mind counts as at least one controller and the power cable now mm. connecting this av wise to your tv so you can get a video and audio signal there's two ways to do it one is the rf cable that goes in the back the other is you just have a standard ye yellow and red that you can use and on modern displays that can be kind of tough the other thing is inside of here in order to get your cartridges to play on this there's a little connector thing. It's called a 72 pin connector. A lot of times, depending on how much use these got, that is really loose and doesn't hold the games anymore. Let's test yours real quick. Okay. Wait, no, I have to push the thing down, right? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. There, there goes. we go. Okay. Now, now we're going. Okay. Is that pretty loose or is that pretty tight? I think it's pretty tight. Yeah. yeah. Right? Let's is see. It? That's pretty loose. It should feel like, it feels like, not like you have to like, sh like really jam it in, but it also shouldn't feel like it slides in really loose. This is a little bit loose. So yeah, that okay. may not mean anything, but it also may mean that it's hard to read these games and that could be a problem. You're starting to remind me of like what it was like trying to like load these games up the last time I turned this on. Yeah, every time people get them, they go to the old habit of blowing in the cartridge, but that actually deteriorates the cartridge too. So that's really, not really advised. <gasps> yeah. That was like the thing that everyone told me to and do. That's the thing that everyone told right? me to do too. Right, we, we cover all... it with your shirt or like, yeah, you know, yeah. like blow it through the shirt. You I know? think blowing through the shirt was a way to keep the moisture out of it. But yeah. it's moisture and old electronics, not a good combination. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm. Assuming that the pin connector works, cosmetically it's a little bit yellowed. It's mm -hmm. not in perfectly white shape. And you've got two controllers and a zapper. The other thing that you need is this power adapter. I mean, if you can get it, the Nintendo brand one is the one that you want, but there's lots of third party ones out there as okay. well. At regular NES console, a fair market Market price with two controllers and a zapper is about a hundred dollars. Really? In this condition, I would say you're more at like 75. That's if you have to replace the pin connector, that's an extra 25, maybe 30 dollars for somebody. Cosmetically, it doesn't really matter as long as it works. I mean the buttons all feel good. And you have the original Nintendo made power and everything like that. I'm gonna say 75 bucks on this. Okay. The other thing that you have is you have the NES power pad. Do you remember what this game what this uh pad was for? Yeah, it was for the, the track game. Track and feet. There's track a, and field. Uh, sorry, track and field, not track and feet. These are pretty cheap to come by. They're 10 to $20 on eBay. 
way. Okay. Shipping, they can be really heavy. So I think if oh, I'm at a store yeah. and I see these, maybe 15 bucks is about the price. So let's mm -hmm. add $15 value onto our lot so far. Okay, before we get into all the games, there's a few things that affect value. Now this game is a little dirty. It's dusty and it's got maybe a little bit of stain on it, but the label, no rips, no tears, no markings, nothing like that. A lot of the NES top labels pull up, peel off. That mm. can really affect the value. The nice thing is, all of your games have, I would say, mint condition labels. Really? Oh, yeah. great. You're going to be able to get and should expect at the top end of what they're worth because they're in such great condition. Okay, so you have about 50 games here, 47 to be exact. I went through all of these and separated them out in terms of value. Oh, and okay. You'll be surprised, I think, at what you have. Out of okay. these, these 47 games, how much would you estimate that we're at on this? A uh, hundred bucks, maybe? I'm averaging like two bucks a game, but I have no idea how much this stuff is. Okay, about two bucks a game. Um, <laughs> Buckle up. The cool thing about the NES, if you're collecting for the NES, is there's a lot of really great games that are only five bucks. Yeah. These games are anywhere from $2 to $7. So I'm averaging okay. out at five each. None of your games are really all that cheap, except for maybe Sesame Street, One, Two, Three, and Silent Service. Everyone had a copy of Silent Service, but I still haven't met one person who's actually played it yet. So Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. But there's also some great games in here. Yeah. Blaster Master, yeah. Marble Madness. Oh, Marble Madness. Now there's two sets of these Mario Duck Hunts. This one has world-class track meet, duck hunt, and Super Mario Brothers. It doesn't really make that much of a difference in value. There's the one okay. that's Mario Duck Hunt in this one. These are your $10 games. Mm. Again, some of these, maybe you can get $12, $13 for them, some of them eight or nine, but I'm gonna just even them out and say 10 bucks each. Looking at these games, these are some of the games that I played the most. Definitely Cobra Triangle, Jack. Uh -huh. You know who published this game, Cobra Triangle? Who? Go to the N64 era, think of Banjo-Kazooie, and oh. so you can actually play this on a compilation on the Xbox One. That's really cool to play too. Just getting started, my friend. Just getting started. These games are your $15 games. Mm. I don't see Barai Fighter all that much. Gyrus, this game, I would play this all the time and the music is like drilled into my head. We've got Super C, the sequel to Contra. I was surprised you don't have the original Contra in this. I don't know, it just that's just one of those things, you know? Also, no Zelda games. No Zelda games. You don't have Zelda games! I Well, not, not for Nintendo. Were you, were you neglected as a child? You got Super Mario Brothers 3. One thing I always look for on this is what's called Left Bros, which is the bros, if it's over on the left-hand side by his hand, this later print actually moved this over to here. TMNT, Bubble Bobble, Metal Gear, Bionic Commando, all great games, all worth 15 bucks each. Now we're climbing up in value to the $20 games. These are all 20 bucks each. How bar bizarre is this game? I don't think I understood what I was actually doing when I would play that growing up. Donkey Kong Classics, Ninja Gaiden 2, and Metal Gear Solid Snake. Snake's Revenge. I like this one a lot. Well, these four games, I'm gonna say 80 bucks. Whoa, all yeah. right. My gosh, this is, this is, this is, this is turning out to be pretty cool. These games are $25. Total classics. One, I think that was my favorite game and specifically trying to get onto this helicopter was yeah. always like the coolest part, right? Capcom just could not fail with their Disney games in this era. And what do you remember about Battletoads? That's like a very mixed feeling nostalgia moment for yeah. me. Cause it's like, I really loved it. It was so cool. And then you got onto those like, like floating jet skis yeah. in the, in like the innards of something. Yep. And it was just the worst experience as a Infamously, child. Way too over difficult. What did you get out of that rare? 25 bucks each, so 50 bucks. That's 50 the total. 50. Now we're gonna get into a category of games that I had to individually price because they exceed the $25 limit. And I've noticed this, just about everybody who has an NES collection has at least one game in there that they had no idea was as expensive as it is. You have at least two of those. Okay, okay. And I'm very right. excited to talk about this. Yeah. Everything okay? Are you guys live? This one is Mega Man 3. This is a $35 game. Okay, Yeah. Nice. What do you remember about Mega Man 3? Uh, it kind of like uh, Battletoads in a way, it was very difficult and uh -huh. there was like some stuff that I just couldn't like line up some of the platforming in there. The next one, you have the trifecta of Ninja Turtles games on the NES. This is a pretty hard one to find. Really? And Ooh. that is Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project. I don't know if you know this, but they just released a collection on the Switch, PS5, of all of every Ninja Turtles game ever. I wonder how much this is going to hold value, but right now it's going for about 40 bucks. Okay. Okay. Let's get into some spicy meatballs oh, okay, here. Okay, cool. All right, you yes. got two games here that are both uh, exceed a $50 amount. Okay. So this is called Worm, Journey to the Center of the Earth. And as I mentioned before, this label is just 
perfect. This one is worth uh, $60, which really? is the price of a brand new PS4 game. I know NES collectors are looking for this game. Really? If, wow. If you just individually listed this on like OfferUp or something, you'd probably get like 10 messages of people wanting to get it from you. Probably close to the retail price. Mm, so okay. This is, this wow. Is a yeah. That's great. That was an interesting game. I, I have very few memories comparatively playing that one, but now it makes me want to go back and like look at that and yeah. try playing it again. This game doesn't look like the other NES games. <laughs> it's a different cartridge. Yeah. And everyone who collects NES is looking at this right now going, are you kidding me? This is an unlicensed Nintendo game. So they didn't go through like Nintendo's seal of quality process, but they still wanted to publish the game. These games are really hard to find. Now there's a few unlicensed licensed games out there that you can find pretty often at like the swap meet for but they're usually you know 15 20 ish dollar games mm -hmm. take a guess on on what might this one go for this is your most valuable game in the whole lot okay um let's say 80 dollars a little higher a hundred two hundred thousand dollars no, i'm no. just kidding <laughs> what oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, okay. Well, I was. Oops. eBay sold listings. There's one at 125 and one at 200. What? And your label is perfect. Have you played this game? Yeah, but I have very minimal memories of it, you know? Color Dreams games are known as being the very worst bottom of the barrel games on the Nintendo. <laughs> and that red hot garbage, I assume That's it's garbage, I... I could be wrong, is worth close to $200. That's insane. Yeah. That's that is, so cool though. I don't know what you do in this game. I don't know anything about it. I just <laughs> know that it's just pretty color and yours is literally mint. There's not any, there's no like rip or tear or anything. You can see that with the ring light there shining on it. I mean, it's just oh in gosh. pristine condition. This game adds us up to $875 for that lot of NES stuff. It's wild to me that this is how much I'm getting. Now, let's talk a little bit about what can we do with all this stuff. So, okay, yes. The first option, and probably the most important one, is you can just keep this stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sell it. There's a lot of value in having a great NES collection. A lot of people mm -hmm. are looking to build one. And if these games bring back childhood memories and having the physical cartridge feels different than playing them on Nintendo Switch's online service or other ways of playing the games, this could be an option for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Option number two is you can go to eBay. Now, eBay is going to be great because you can list it for the full market value, but by the time you factor in shipping and fees and your time, you know, you're looking at yeah. about 80 percent the value. The advantage here is that you can sell what you want, but you might have to deal with customer service returns. A lot of people might see a rare game like the King's Neptunes game, and they might try to say that it broke, and then you have to deal with the hassle of all that. And yeah. then you also have other pieces of this too, where it's a lot of time to list it, to sell it, to pay for the shipping supplies, and that may not be a big deal to you. But for some people, it's like, my time is worth more than that, and I just don't want to do that. Option three is an offer up listing. This would be a good offer up listing, but I would recommend if you do something, anything over a hundred plus dollars, especially with rare items in it, make sure you're at a bank or a police station or something yeah. like that, just to stay safe. You would put up the whole thing together. You can individually price the games, but at that point, now you have another problem, which is a lot of people on offer up they don't follow through, they don't commit, or they you know, go back and forth and haggle at an unreasonable rate. The reason this lot would be valuable to someone is because there's a few games in there that are really high value games. Mm. So someone else might go, hey, I'll give you 600 for it, and they give you the money, and then they're gonna resell a bunch of it to recoup their cost and keep the rare games. That's a lot of what I've done with, with my stuff. I see. The other thing that you can do is you can take this to a pawn shop. I don't know percentage-wise what pawn shops would do on this. Some of them might just do a blanket, I'll give you five bucks each. Others of them might try to give you, you know, even more, who knows. Game stores, like all stores, are businesses, and their job is to make money. The NES is a product that still sells a lot. It's not something that sits around like other aspects of the video game market. Okay. People have some old stuff that's really valuable, but it might take them a year or even two to sell it. Whereas the NES, you can rely on it to, to move pretty decently quickly. This would make a lot of sense if you're just like, I just need to get it out. I don't really want to sit on it. The advantage of a game store is you're helping to spread this out to other enthusiasts. Right. You know, you're helping a local business, usually because GameStops aren't yeah. buying these, but local mom and pop stores are. The game stores are usually going to give you a little more value if you decide to turn it into trade credit. And usually that's 50, 60% the value. It could be a good way for me to connect with 
with some of my local game stores too because I don't I don't frequent them that that often. But I have gone and I always yep. enjoy when I go over there. Or maybe even like just sell part of it or something like that. The next option is you can go to a Facebook group, you can go to Instagram, you can find some social media presence for other retro collectors, and you can say I've got all this stuff for sale. I'm looking to get 750 for it, and you're gonna have to maybe deal with shipping or you know that kind of a thing. But that could be a really safe, good way to do this as well. Uh, assuming again you're just smart about where you meet up and all of that. Right. The other thing is you could sell to me, and I would I would buy this from you. Um, I would offer you 425 for everything, about 50% the value of it. What I would probably do is keep a, hand, a couple of the games, maybe Worm and uh, maybe one or two of the other ones, and I would probably end up reselling the rest. Would you keep Neptune? I don't know because I've heard it's so terrible. So <laughs> I don't okay. know, but I, right. I would offer you 425 for it. So okay. a little more than a game store, but not as much as you might get someone on offer up. And, right, and then you'd be done. It'd be in my possession. And you'd be good to go. Given all of those options, keep mm. it, sell it. The avenues of selling it. I'm not going to hold you to this, but impulse wise, what would you do right now given all of that? Um, yeah, I'd sell it to you. Really? That would be my first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, this be. I mean. The, the fact that you put all this stuff together and that you have this awesome like place to do this is like I mean heck yeah man I, 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 would, I would do that for you for well sure. shoot well then okay well if you decide to follow through on that we will work all that out but we'll talk I love that now Skyler is not going anywhere in fact we're gonna do a part two because wait until you see oh my gosh you brought crazy stuff with you today. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Like, not just like, oh, a rare game in the lot, which you had, but like, like stuff that never comes up. And when it does, there's a lot of people who want it. So make sure you stick around. Skylar, thank you for being here. Of course. Ready to do part yeah. two? Let's do it. All right, tune in. While many of us have items of value hidden away in that old box of childhood games or toys, the odds of us having something newsworthy are quite low and dependent on a number of complex factors. And yet, whatever the monetary value may be of those childhood items, Nothing is more valuable than the joy that comes from the memories they leave with us. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.